The Sage 100 ERP Return of Goods feature makes it easy to track and manage vendor returns, replacement orders, and credit memos. In this tutorial, we'll walk through two examples of how to process return of goods to a vendor. In our first example, we'll be returning damaged goods and are expecting replacement items from our vendor. This example assumes the PO which the goods were received from has not been purged from history. For our second example, we'll be returning goods for credit and we don't know the original PO they were purchased and received against. So now let's jump right in and get started with the first example. We'll begin by going to our menu tree and select Purchase Order, Material Requisition and Returns, Return of Goods Entry. In the Return of Goods Entry window, we'll click the Next Number icon. The return date defaults to our current system date, which you can change if necessary. Moving to Authorization Number, if the vendor provides you with one, it may be entered here. We'll leave this field blank. Recall that in this first example, we're returning goods for replacement on a recently received PO. In order to do this, we need to enter the original PO number. This will reduce the quantity received on this purchase order so that it may be received again. If the purchase order was complete, this process would reopen the PO and place it in back order status. Importantly, this will also provide an audit trail in the PO receipt history. Moving to invoice number, entering an invoice number here will create a credit memo that will be applied to the vendor's account. Since we're expecting replacement items, we won't be creating a credit memo, so we'll leave this blank. The vendor number and header information is automatically entered from the original purchase order. If any of these fields need to be different, for the return versus the original PO, such as the purchase address, ship to address, ship via, FOB, or warehouse, you can make the appropriate edits as necessary. Your shipping department may need this information to return the items. Now we'll open the address tab. Here we'll verify the purchase and ship to addresses that default from the original purchase order. These fields can be changed as needed. Now we'll move to the lines tab and we receive a message asking if we want to return the complete purchase order. You may click yes if most of the items from the original PO will be returned to the vendor. This will default the total quantity ordered into the return field on each line. The returned quantity may then be modified for individual lines if necessary. Quantities returned for lot or serialized items are not recorded automatically and must be entered and distributed manually. For our example, we'll select No and the PO line defaults into the return. Each line will display the quantity ordered and received for the PO. However, because we answered No to returning the complete purchase order, the return quantity on the item here is zero and it must be entered manually. For our demonstration, we'll enter a returned quantity of two. Next, we'll move to the Totals tab where we can view the total of the return and now we'll click Accept. Now let's begin our second example by clicking the Next Number icon and we'll accept the default system date. For the authorization number, this was provided by our vendor and we'll enter 12443. In this example, we're returning goods for credit and we'll not reference a specific purchase order. This will remove the item quantities from inventory and create a credit on the vendor's account. In order to create the credit during the return of goods process, we must enter an invoice or credit number. Importantly though, the invoice number from the original receipt cannot be used. However, you can modify the original invoice number with a letter or number. For our example, we'll enter our original invoice number followed by the letter C. Now we'll choose our vendor and using the lookup, we'll select Stephen Supply. You may update any of the remaining fields here as necessary. Next, we'll open the Address tab to confirm the information and then the Lines tab to enter the return item data. For the item code, we'll enter 6655. Then, using the Enter key, we'll move to the Ordered field and enter a quantity of 1 and this automatically completes the Received and Return Quantity fields. Next, we'll move to the Totals tab. 
and here you can review the total credit to be generated, and we'll go ahead and click Accept. At this point, we've finished entering the return of goods for both examples, and now we'll print the return orders. These will be used by the shipping department to process the returns and to include with the items being shipped back to the vendor. So now we'll hit the printer button and for demonstration purposes, we'll preview the return orders on our screen. This is the return for our first example and the second example is on page 2. Let's close the window and we'll elect not to print the return order register. Now we need to update our entries and to do this, we'll go to the menu tree and under Purchase Order, Material Requisition and Return and select Return Order Register slash Update. We'll accept the default date and we'll have the system print full comments. And then we'll hit Print. You should review the registers for accuracy and it's important to note that whether you're returning goods against the PO or not, the item cost will be relieved from inventory based on the valuation method of the item using the item cost hierarchy. For example, average cost items will be relieved at the current average cost for the warehouse and FIFO items will be relieved from the first slash oldest cost here. Continuing on, we'll close the report and click yes to update the register and yes to print the daily transaction register and then hit print. You should review your registers for accuracy and now we'll close it and click Yes to update the daily transaction register. To review the resulting entries from our examples, let's go back to the menu tree and under Purchase Order, Main, select Purchase Order Entry. Here we'll enter 10018, our original PO number, and hit Enter. Notice that the order status is set to back order. Now let's look at the Lines tab. The item returned now shows 10 ordered and 2 back ordered as a result of the returned items. When the replacement items are received, the receipt of goods will be processed as normal against the purchase order. Let's click Accept and close the window. Since an invoice number was not entered on the header of the return, the vendor account will not be affected. Now let's take a look at the vendor used in our second example by going to the menu tree and select Accounts Payable, Main, Vendor Inquiry. Using the lookup, we'll select Stevens Supply. Jumping to the Invoices tab, notice that our original invoice and the credit invoice entered during the return are displayed. Next, we'll review inventory quantities, and to do this, we'll return to the menu tree and open Inventory Management, Main, Item Inquiry. Using the lookup, we'll select the item used in our first example, then we'll open the Transactions tab. As you can see, the two returned items are listed here along with the reference number from the return of goods. Now let's click OK and review our second example. In the Item Code field, we'll enter 6655 and hit Enter. The system retained our position on the Transactions tab from the previous selection and you can see that our return is displayed here. And that completes our tutorial. So to recap, the purchase order return of goods entry can be used to simplify vendor returns and track them throughout the system. Give us a call if you need assistance with this or any other feature in your Sage 100 ERP system. Well that's it for this tutorial. Bye for now.